Hello, I'm Kathy Hacking, and today I want to share with you some basic instructions for tapping, um, also known as uh, meridian tapping or emotional freedom technique. Uh, there are actually a lot of options, but the very basic beginning is that you're going to be using a couple of your fingers and applying gentle pressure. That's a major misunderstanding that this is really a soft modality. Um, even especially when the topic that you're tapping on is something uh, that has a lot of emotional content for you. Um, strive to be more gentle with yourself. Um, think about if you were working with another person, how compassionate would you be with them? Okay, so the setup, we're going to use the side of the hand, and this is a fill-in-the-blank kind of an exercise. So we're going to start with, even though I have this problem, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. And that's the pretty standard thing to say, but it could be something more along the lines of, even though I have this problem, I know that I'm okay. I'm still here. Uh, physically in this moment, I am safe. And that one is a pretty accessible statement for most people. Um, so this thing is happening, and you would want to be as specific as you need to be to be on the topic. Um, but you don't have to tell the whole story right there and you don't need to share all the details for your system to benefit from tapping. So even though I have this problem, this thing going on, this pain in my body, I know that right now I am safe. And you can go the other way around too and say, I know that I am actually physically safe even though I am having this stress right now. We're aiming for about three times through the setup statement. And that's plenty right here tapping on the side of the hand. It can be done on either side. Uh, the meridian system of the body is mirrored. So meridian on your left side of your body is the same as the meridian systems on the right side of your body. After you've done your setup, you're going to want to use a reminder phrase, something short. Um, so this problem is the generic reminder phrase and does work if you know you are present with um, the emotion of something going on then just tapping through the points and saying this problem, this problem, this problem. Uh, someone else sitting with you wouldn't know what are you talking about, what are you tapping on. Um, it is important to be speaking out loud, especially when you begin with tapping. Um, your system is still learning. What are we doing and why are we doing it? After you've done tapping for a while, you can do it without speaking, but to begin with, we're going to be tapping through the points, and you've seen it can go very quickly. You can also spend a lot of time on each of the points. Uh, traditional beginning point is the beginning of the inside edge of the eyebrow, so that's either side the beginning of the eyebrow. Next is the side of the eye on the bone, not over, you know, like on your eyelashes and not way over here on your hairline, just gently right there on the temple. And you can see I'm not leaving marks. You know, my tapping is soft enough. If I did it down here on my cheek, you can kind of see I'm moving the tissue. But there's no lasting uh, red mark, or, and especially not bruising from the tapping. Um, if you ever see somebody tapping and they're like, oh, stop. <laughs> um, what we are doing with the tapping is meant to be triggering movement in the energy body. Um, the flow of the meridian systems, uh, kind of like the way water would healthily flow through pipes if they're all clear and open, um, it's a nice smooth transition from one into the next. Your meridian system is hooked up that way. You have, you know, okay, go down this way and back up this way and down to your feet and back up to your 
core and down and out the arms again and back up. So they really are connected to each other and they like to flow with each other. Um, what we're doing with the tapping is stimulating a little bit of movement to encourage them. So if there is one that has a blockage for some reason, um, and there are a lot of things that can um, set up a blockage in your system, that could be its whole own discussion. Um, so if you have interest in what are the meridians, uh, what is acupressure, um, traditional Chinese medicine is probably what you want to go look up and study their whole concept of the body and the flowing of the meridians and the way the meridians really feed the internal organs and provide health for your body. So coming back to emotional freedom technique, uh, tapping, we're going to start at the beginning of the eyebrow, continue at the side of the eye, and then under the eye, on the cheekbone, you know, not up where in the soft tissue of the eye and not really way down here, just on the cheekbone. Under the nose and under the lips, on the chin, uh, some people do those at the same time. All of these, you know, you can go through and do your tapping both sides at the same time. Uh, we will continue in that order top to bottom. Uh, it's just some easy pattern. Um, the guy that started all of this picked those points because they were major beginning, ending, and crossover points of the main meridians. Okay, so if you want, you can go learn the names of those meridians. And there are even names and numbers for the points on the body, but there are thousands of acupressure points. So don't worry about missing it. <laughs> if you're tapping somewhere on your body, you're going to be stimulating movement in your meridian system. And your intention to be tapping to assist with relieving an emotional uh, blockage or something that feels stuck is also going to help tremendously. Uh, your body receives the information that we're doing this process for this outcome and says, okay, you're close enough. I'm willing to receive that assistance. So this problem, this problem, this problem. And if you want to talk more, if you want to continue, so if it was a physical pain, um, let's pick a random, uh, this pain in my back, this pain in my back, you could say this sharp pain, this dull pain, this ache, this chronic pain, um, this, you know, I hate this, uh, it bothers me, I, I wish it wasn't there. Um, you are welcome to continue talking as you move through the points, um, but you are also welcome to stay on just one reminder phrase. The thing to know about tapping is frequently the thing we think is the matter is not really the underlying problem. And so as you start to tap, and that first issue starts to have some resolution, you may become aware of other topics, other things that are more the matter that you were not present with and aware of to begin with. So you could continue on the topic you were on, keep tapping while that uh, level of upset, discomfort comes down, or you can I call it daisy changing, you go off on that other topic and say, oh, but there's this thing. And really, actually, you know, I was saying my back hurt, but I just hate going to work and I don't like my job. And you can go then and tap on that topic and then the things that come up about that, you know, is it the environment? Is it your commute that you really don't like? Is it the people that you have to work with? Uh, what it is they're asking you to do, or, you know, are they just um, not ever saying thank you? A lot of times, something as simple as, I feel unappreciated, um, as a general topic to tap on, can really help to release 
emotional content for a lot of areas of your life. So, I've been working so hard and no one said thank you. No one said thank you. Tapping through the points. Um, if you skip one, that's fine. Uh, you can go the other direction. Uh, some people find that they have a favorite point. One that when they get to that, it feels like it moved. Um, and that awareness of energy is something that will develop with time. Um, don't worry about if right now you don't have a sensitivity for feeling if that meridian was blocked or if that was the thing that needed tapped on. Um, be aware though that you will develop that skill. Um, as you are doing tapping for yourself, you will start to be able to hear in your own voice. Oh, that was a lie. I, you know, <laughs> when you say something out loud and your body doesn't really believe that, that's a tapable issue. Like, okay, what is this? Why do I have a conflict here? What's that from? A good question with tapping anytime is what does this remind me of? This is just like, and then tap on that. And as you're going through that topic, what is that just like? Does that remind you of something? And as you unravel all of these topics and the places where they overlap and they're connected to each other, your body relaxes. Your energy system is flowing and you get to have a sense of peace and calm. Um, and so initially, yes, it looks strange, but that's actually a top of, tappable issue too. This looks odd. This is bizarre. I can't imagine doing this and having anybody see me do this. Um, tap for that. Uh, tap for, I, I would like to have this work for me but I don't think it will, so I'm not gonna try. That's a tappable issue. That's something that could be resolved by having um, your body learn the calm and clear, connected, flowing energy pattern while you're on that topic. Um, and that is really what we are accomplishing through the tapping, teaching the body a new, calm, relaxed, connected pattern of flow, even though we might be talking about a phobia or an addiction, a stress, something that is painful, whether it's a physical circumstance or a relationship, memories, all sorts of topics. Um, tapping can be helpful for all of these things, but you've got to try it. Okay? So I want to share with you uh, more specifically the points for tapping. Um, we have the beginning of the eyebrow, side of the eye, under the eye, under the nose, on the chin, chin point or under the lips, the collarbone, this is actually a large area, there are lots and lots of them across there, so that whole space where, you know, if you put on a tie and knotted it, it would be right in that area on your clavicle where all of this, your sternum and everything comes together. Under the arm, uh, specifically it's on the midline, so if you had a plastic doll that had a seam, it would be right there. On the ribs, for most people that's a sore spot. You can feel when you hit it. Um, a lot of people use uh, the inside of the wrist on both sides and you can just tap those against each other to accomplish that. Um, the top of the head is a common favorite. Uh, different practitioners of meridian tapping have incorporated their favorites, the ones that work quickly for them. Um, I've seen people also tap on the back side of the hand. There is a procedure called the gamut point technique. Um, 
that has fallen out of use for general topics. Uh, if you have something that is really obviously bothering you, uh, the general round of tapping through the main points is probably going to shift it for you. Um, the gamut point technique is something that is done uh, when you have a psychological reversal uh, where one part of your consciousness says yes let's take care of this and the other part of your consciousness says no. It's not actually good for us to do that. I have reasons, I have experience, I have content that is itself a tappable issue, but then you find that you're fighting against yourself. Um, so the gamut point technique is a brain balancing exercise. There are, are lots of brain balancing exercises out there, but this one in particular uses uh, the gamut point, which is in between the ring finger and the small finger on the back of your hand in the soft tissue, so we're not over on the knuckles or the bones, it's in the soft. And again, you're tapping gently, um, not leaving any marks. And so what they want you to do for the gamut point procedure, bring up your topic, and then while you're tapping, close your eyes and open your eyes. And we're leaving the head looking forward, and then you're looking down to one side, and down to the other, still thinking about that topic. And then like you had a big clock in front of you, you're going to look all the way around the numbers, kind of slowly, clockwise, back up to the top, and then down counterclockwise, still tapping, still thinking of your topic. And then as you continue with the tapping on the gamut point, they want you to hum and count and hum. It does need to be a tune, not just noise. It needs to be a, a song with words, something you recognize. Happy birthday is the generic a lot of people go to. So, <laughs> and then one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> the hum count hum just like the looking left and looking right and rolling your eyes around one direction and the other direction while you're tapping gets the left side and the right side of your brain engaged and on the same topic like okay this is what we're doing and then when you go into tapping for this issue, this pain, this irritation, whatever your topic was, the number should be coming down. Now, what is the number? Uh, the SUDS level, uh, subjective units of discomfort, is something entirely up to you. Uh, someone working with you or outside of yourself should not be telling you what your SUDS level is. This is your opinion, your experience of whatever the issue is. So zero to ten, how big is it in your world? Um, zero, it's not a problem at all, I'm functioning fine, what do you mean? Okay, uh, ones and twos are pretty low, a little bit of an irritation, I would like it to go away but I can continue the way I am. Getting into four and five, I'm having to work harder to hold myself together and, you know, get on with what I'm trying to do because this thing is here and it's a distraction and irritation, and it, right? As you go up the scale, six, seven, eight, it's starting to be obvious to other people that something is wrong and it's really uncomfortable and it does start you know, it's interfering with my life, um, having a hard time doing the things I want to do or need to do because of this topic, whether it's a phobia, addiction, a physical pain, okay? When you get up to 10, some people say it's a 20. <laughs> so if you go to check in what's the sense level on this topic and your response is something over 10, it's a 10, okay? That's a... Uh, the kind of things that get labeled a phobia that we sometimes want to go talk to a doctor and uh, the traditional route would be to seek medication. Um, so your SUDS level 
is usually gauged 0 to 10. And that's something that it can be very helpful to be taking notes and write down, you know, what topic huh, topic did you begin tapping on and what was your sense level. And then after you've done a couple rounds tapping through the points on that topic to reassess, say, okay, is it still a 9? Has it come down? Am I aware? Is there really another issue right under it? And maybe if you pause for a second and you know, write down this other topic and do some tapping on that, and that starts to come down, then you can come check on this one. Oh, okay. So that's your sense level. Um, once again, that's completely subjective units of discomfort or displeasure. How much is this impacting your world, interfering with your life? Um, the cool thing with the emotional freedom technique, why it is called that, is because these things do change, they do move. And so uh, I have journal entries I will go back and read and see, really? That bothered me that much? And if I sit with it for a minute, I can kind of think and remember, yeah, that's true. I, I can think of a time when I was having that much trouble and having that much discomfort and it's emotional freedom because after I did my tapping through that, sometimes on my own and sometimes working with another practitioner, it actually changed, it actually came down to zero and all the other supporting issues, things that were related and maintaining that in my world, tapping on them, bringing them down also, I have freedom, I have so much more ease in my body and talking with other people at all, <laughs> much less on video. Um, so let's do some tapping on a specific topic. Um, I have Becca here yes. um, to be the echo. Um, working with another person, it does generally work that way that uh, the person guiding will say a statement and then the person participating or the class uh, will repeat the phrase. And part of what that accomplishes is giving us a moment to feel how did that land? Did that sound true? Did that feel right? And so as you're tapping along, please do tap along. Um, even if you think this is not an issue for you, you will be teaching your body this pattern, this program, and how it works, and borrowing benefits for something else similar you might have, even without saying the same words. But if there is a way of saying it that would be more true for you, please say that. Um, and Becca, the same thing. If there's some wording a little bit different that would feel more right, um, because your uh, mental emotional filing system is really uh, triggered by your vocabulary, your language about it. Um, so that's why, you know, having someone else <laughs> tell your story for you or make a decision about your sense level really doesn't work. Um, so the topic that we are going to begin on now. I don't honor or value my time, energy, and resources. I don't honor and value my time and resources? Yes, all of that. All of that. <laughs> okay. So the setup phrase, the beginning, is on the side of the hand. I have this thing happening. I have this thing happening. And other people point it out to me sometimes. And other people point it out to me sometimes. Where I am not valuing. Where I am not valuing my skill, my skill, my time, my time, my energy, my energy, my resources, my resources. So even though all of that, even though all of that happens regularly, happens regularly, I love and accept myself. I love and accept myself. I know that I am safe. I know that I am safe. I know that I will survive. I know that I will survive. Even when I fail. Even when I fail to honor 
to honor and appropriately value and appropriately appropriately value my time my time energy energy and resources and resources so that's about three times through the setup statement now we want a reminder phrase something shorter and officially your time your energy and your resources are three different topics so let's start with my time so up at the beginning of yep the inside of the eyebrow I don't value my time. I don't value my time. I don't value my time on the side of the eye. I don't value my time. Under the eye on the cheekbone. I don't value my time. I don't value my time. Under the nose. I give my time away. I give my time away. Under the lips on the chin. Over and over again. Over and over again. I give so much more time. I give so much more time. Than I really had to give. Than I really time. had to give. Back to the top of the head. I give away my time. I give away my time. Inside of the eyebrow. I know better. I know better. But then I do it again. Side of the eye. But then I do it again. Under the eye. My time. My time. Under the nose. I don't treat it like my time. I don't treat it like my time. On the chin. I kind of treat it like everybody else's time. I kind of treat it like everyone else's time. Something weird going on there on the collarbone. Something weird going on there. And under the arm. Take a deep breath. Okay, so just check in. I didn't have you rate <laughs> before we started. <laughs> How big was this thing where you give away your time and you put yourself in uncomfortable situations because of giving and giving and giving and like, uh, I need to go, but we're not done here yet, so I'll stay. How big is that in your world? Like a six. <laughs> okay, so let's continue. Um, and having that sense number level is something you can incorporate into tapping. So come back up to the eyebrow. It's a level six. It's a level six. Oh my God, it's a six. Oh my God, it's a six. I give away my time. I give away my time. Even when I'm exhausted. Even when I'm exhausted. I am so tired. I am so tired. But they need me. But they need me. Take a deep breath. Level six. Level six. That's kind of serious. That's kind of serious. That's making a big problem in my world. That's making a big problem in my world. I'm not doing things I need to do. I'm not doing things I need to do. Actually with my time. Actually with my time. When I'm letting everyone have as much time as they want. When I'm having, when I'm letting everyone else have all the time they want. On the chin. This isn't working for me. 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 Giving away all of my time. Giving away all my time. Really isn't serving me. Really isn't serving me. I'm not taking care of myself the way I could be. I'm not taking care of myself like I could be. Because I'm giving so much. Because I'm giving so much. And actually. And actually. Maybe. Maybe. Giving away so much. Giving away so much. Devaluing my time. Devaluing my time. Encourages those people. Encourages those people. To ask for more and more. To ask for more and more. And value my time less and less. And value my time less and less. I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't want to think about that. <laughs> I don't want to think about that. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. They could value me even less. They could value me even less. I could give away all of my time. I could give away all of my time. And it would not make them value me more. And it would not make them value me anymore. <sighs> Maybe. Maybe. Since I'm calling it my time. Since I'm calling it my time. Maybe I could start treating it like my time. Maybe I could start treating it like my time. What would I do? 
what would I do? How would I be? How would I be? If it really is my time. If it really is my time. Think about that for just a second. My time. My time. Come under the eye. My life. My life. My energy. My energy. For me. For me. What if my time what if my time and my energy and my energy were meant to be for me? Were meant to be for me. What if I could know? What if I could know? What would be happy for me? What would be happy for me? What would I enjoy doing? What would I enjoy doing? What would be a contribution? What would be a contribution? For my life. For my life. If I let myself have my time. If I let myself have my time. Would that be okay? Would that be okay? I might have to say no. I might have to say no. Oh my god, I can't say no. Oh my god, I can't say no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No is a bad word. No is a bad word. I can't tell people no. I can't tell people no. If I say no. If I say no. They'll just move on and ask somebody else. They'll move on and ask someone else. And they'll remember that I said no. And they'll remember I said no. And I'll remember. And I'll remember. And then we'll both know that I said no. And then we'll both know that I said no. And they might think I'll say no next time. And they might think I'll say no next time. And is that okay? And is that okay? Could I say no? Could I say no? <sighs> okay, check in again about my time, valuing, honoring, respecting the time. Is it still six? No. But what's your number now? I'd say a three. Maybe. Okay, that's awesome. <laughs> so if your sense level is moving, it, like you're reporting it's come down from a 6 to a 3, that's a sign that this is working, that it's a tappable issue and the tapping is moving it. Um, we did some daisy chaining going off on, uh, trying out slightly different wording and phrasing to find what does this really feel like? What's the the thing that's underneath supporting that behavior of not honoring and respecting personal time? Um, so if we continue on that, you can keep tapping and get it down to nothing. And then, you know, suddenly you can go places and you're like, no, I don't, I'm not available. <laughs> <laughs> and um, in my own world, I have found that I laugh about it because it is such a change for me, uh, having spent so many years growing up always saying yes, always giving and giving and giving, uh, far exceeding anyone's expectations of what I should give, uh, that now having the emotional freedom and the space to really check in about, do I want to do this? Would this be a contribution in my life, my world, even if it's a volunteering activity? Am I going to be nourished by this activity? Uh, spending time with even a client, uh, there are times when it is not helpful for me, my family, my overall week or month to just automatically say yes. Um, and the times when I have been upfront and honest as a therapist, as a practitioner of healing modalities to say, I'm not available this week, let's look at another time. Actually, it's better that way. And my willingness to say, either, no, I don't really want to do this at all, or now is not a good time for me, lets us, when it does happen, 
be much more present, uh, be on, more on purpose, and have an outcome that was always there. You know, the possibilities are amazingly endless. But a lot of what you find is direct relation to how you showed up and if if you chose to show up, if you choose to do these things for yourself. So, Becca, are you still at a three? Check in again. I do not honor and value my time. I think I'm down to a two. Okay, so I delayed like that so you could have the example that even if you get interrupted in the middle of tapping and you know you've got to go answer the phone, do other things, although I would invite you to turn off your phone <laughs> and not be available for at least a couple minutes every day, there is something called integration time that you've started the movement in your energy system. You've tripped these little spots and said, hey, I'm aware and I'm willing for this to come back into alignment, return to harmony. I'm willing to take a breath and reconsider how I have been being. That your body will continue doing the work. And it might take a little while and it might not. Even that expectation of, you know, if I start tapping, it's going to take several years for me to really get good at it. That's a tapable issue. That is an expectation that could be different. A point of view that is shaping your world. Now, for myself, I rarely need to do a full round of tapping on a topic. Sometimes starting to be aware of a, a pattern, something that's coming up, I can tap a couple points and have them move. Because my body says, oh, okay. Whatever we've been doing and for whatever reason we were doing that pattern of jumbled and blocked and not functioning, Oh, I remember, even though I have this problem, even though this stress is happening right now, I'm listening to the news and it's making me very nervous and uncomfortable. I'm feeling anxiety about this. Tapping can remind my system, even though this thing is happening, I know how to breathe. I know how to relax and allow my body to release the tension, to be calm, to be healthy. And then, other side benefit of tapping, besides all the emotional freedom, is actually having your levels of stress come down, having your physical health improve because you're not spending so much time running around in that high level of stress um, and all the chemical changes that happen in your body when you think you might need to get up and run or you know, be attacked at any moment. So, thank you, thank you. I hope that this has been a contribution to your world, and I hope to hear from you. Thanks.